What a nice breeze. You should be able to speak now. Your awakening has begun. You can see me. That's the proof. You're able to recognize external existences now. That woman told you before, right? The woman I killed from Babylon. People keep changing even after they die. It really is amazing, isn't it? It's like we're being cultivated and are developing inside you. Hmm. Anyway, let's talk about you. I'll listen to anything you want to talk about. You want to erase your memories, right? If you awaken completely, Conway will know. Both of the Conways. Each attached to one of the groups in the 25th Ward. And what you're trying to do will get found out. And you'll be deleted immediately. So you're trying to buy some more time before your full awakening. But that plan is not something that you thought of. The people here thought it up and implanted it into your subconscious. In order to steal the 25th Ward data and make off of it. It would be better to, uh, to wait a while and keep you only half awakened for the time being. With no memories. So we need to cooperate and figure out what these people are doing. I'll make you a card. I am a... That's right. That's my name. Your little sister's name. And the name of the girl you'll meet in the 25th Ward. dream, right? Hmm. I wonder. To think I'd be able to see you again. Whatever. Never mind. Give me a trinity. Okay. I'm surprised you remember that. The holy trinity. Yes. God is one, but has three personas. Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's right. You and me. And the turtle. What's this? Turtle ornament. I made it myself. Nice work. <laughs> I'm happiest when you compliment me. Sorry about that. What an honor. So anyway, this turtle. I want you to hold on to him for me. I plan to come back for it again sometime. Alright, I'll keep it for you. Great. You're welcome. Hmm? Oh, I thought you said thanks just now. You never change. Neither do you. Really? You think so? I really think so. Yeah, 
could be alright. I mean, even this place. The operation is complete. Tokyo Morishima. It's almost time to wake up. Regard the world with your new eye. Tokyo. Do you know where you are? Kanto, 25th Ward. Not far from where you used to live. Hm. The Disney should be over. Accept reality. Take the suggestion. Inside the boat. I've prepared everything. Good boy. Look me in the eyes. I've got a lot for you to do. This mission must be success. You are a tape. Containing the most precious and important information ever. So I've thought up some conditions that you won't be able to refuse. If you fail, you'll pay me back with death. Your death. And the death of your little sister. Of course, we have your sister secured. Don't let her die. I get it now. Kamui's secret was... mixed in with the flower petals, or... pieces of a dream. The secret is Kamui's true identity. Not an idea, nor words. It's like a ripened fruit. Simply... hanging there. I took that fruit in hand and ate it. And committed a sin. Meru. Nope. She's gone. Trust me. Slash is okay. It's me. I've been waiting. Everything one as you can imagine. Looks like you've regained your memories and the switch has been flipped. <laughs> I'm heading to the ward office. What's the computer room pin code and the password to receive the data? 4411. The phone. There's a snake under the floor. Understood. What a concise and clear attitude. <laughs> what else do you want from me? Go. I'll go. Full speed ahead.
I can see it. There it is. The goddamn board office. This is fancy. Please plug in a connectable device. The device is me. So? Where's the plug? The snake is under the floorboards! Didn't you? Oh, never mind. Nothing else to choose. Under here. There we go. This is it. What a stupid joke. Okay, guess it's about time. Transmission. There is way too much here. Yeah, seriously. It's an amazing amount. I'm getting full already. You're gonna get swallowed up by the 25th Ward. This is all the data that's been monitored up to this point. This shit is ridiculous. Super hella totally fucking ridiculous. Just don't just copy me. This is impossible. You're a specialist, right? I'm going- it's going over the limit. Quit bitching and just do it. I am already doing it. There we go. Download complete. Yeah, that's not an unsettling face at all. Fictional woman, mentally unstable with the habit of lying, now a pathetic withered plant. Although I'm somehow living a long life, when it comes to when it comes time to write something here, I want to try to write out as, my true feelings as much as possible. It's not necessarily for anyone. It's because I'm certain that this will be the last time. Women who always talk about how they're going to die don't really seem to die so too often, but still. Ever since I killed Milu, I've changed dramatically. I know why. The IMA inside me has awakened. I knew it when I killed her. 
by killing the other me, which could be called a fake original. It was when I- it was like I shed the skin of a person, which became my awakening. GOG has said something like this to me before. In Japanese, Ayame is also the name of a flower, but it also means to kill. Then I imagined something really cliche. There's a village, of a village in the mountains where people who kill for a living live, and both the boys and girls are born there to be ra born there to are, are raised to be assassins. They're sometimes made to kill each other, and only the ones who survive can become real assassins. I wonder whether Ayame was named Ayame before she was a natural-born killer. Then, once the Ayame inside me awakened, I found out that idea was completely wrong. The Ayame that was suddenly born inside me was an impulse. Humans tried to stop crime in order to protect the society that everyone built. But everyone knows that the society that, that society isn't perfect. Even though it was separated, the 24th Ward was created in order to try and build a perfect society. But it resulted in the 24th Ward turning into an almost laughably imperfect society. The hearts of people who are forced into an imperfect society and faced with immense pressure end up being twisted to their limit, giving birth to criminal power. Criminal power isn't something possessed by a single person. It is a twisted sort of power that spreads subconsciously among the various people who compose the society. The 25th Ward was created in order to observe and inspect the mechanisms that generate and create this criminal power, and what lies beyond. As for the reason for looking into this, on the surface it was for the sake of creating a perfect society. Besides the, intention, besides the true intentions of gaining complete control over per criminal power, and using it to control and subdue. But there exists, an ex there exists a power that is able to break through that power of control. It can't be controlled. And it has no true shape or form. It's a power that makes one feel something primitive. But very simply, it is an impulse. It's neither a power of good, nor evil. It's simply a kind of instinctual emotion. As the days went by, the IMA inside me grew larger. Like a tumor that develops inside your body keeps growing and growing, IMA kept developing while stealing my nutrients. It's like the rain last night never happened. It's almost too hot now. Sunlight is like poison to old people. You really didn't need to come all the way out here for me. Well, there was something I wanted to make certain of by meeting face to face. I see. What is it? First, I want to know the situation. We secured you on the sea this morning, but there was no data. We checked inside your head, but it was totally empty. I didn't feel too good, you know. <sighs> I just can't get used to having people looking around inside my head. And for five straight hours, too. Just when I thought I was free, now I have to meet with you. Christ. Where did the data go? For you outsiders, in order to copy and steal the data in the 25th Ward computer network, you had to use me. Right? Yeah. You're an unimaginable device can disable any copy guard system, any security. We don't have it implemented yet. But we should have prepared a special plug. It'll help get around laws that haven't been tweaked yet. Sounds like something people like you would say. 
but sending the data through me once, I was able to treat it as normal digital data. It was an amazingly huge load, but anyway. Basically, I used the internet to simply pass the data along. That was the only chance I had. That's all there is to it. Why did you have to do something like that? Have to. Nah, I just wanted to fuck with you. Haven't been toyed with for so long, I kind of wanted to rebel a little bit. That's only natural, right? You sound like a little punk kid. Better than a lying asshole. So? What sort of deal are you thinking about? I'll listen. Make it quick. Deal, huh? That could be nice. And now Tokyo is the one with... with... Tokyo is the one that's gonna be pulling the strings. Tokyo Morishima, unknowingly cradling an as of yet unawakened Kamui inside of himself, was waiting for me to shake him out of his slumber. Or maybe the IMA inside of me had telepathically communicated with the Kamui inside of Tokyo Morishima, and was attempting to reawaken her former lover. <laughs> That's a joke, of course. Either way, I was to find out that Tokyo Morishima of the past had entrusted me with that role. Gioji and Tokyo Morishima were old friends from their days in the 24th Ward. I found that out while digging up old records from the net. But just how far ahead had Gioji been? I'm sure that you couldn't have foreseen that Tokyo Morishima would end up becoming so cloudy and flustered that he'd forget his own birthday. It was during the evening, three days ago, that the cloudy, flustered man would be attacked and taken away suddenly. Just prior to that, someone from the Regional Adjustment Bureau showed up and started talking about possible adjustment for Tokyo Morishima. It became clear that the fact of it, that measures regarding Tokyo and Morishima were being taken meant that the experiment was finally nearing its end. Tokyo and Morishima's kidnapping was thought to have been perpetrated by the Regional Adjustment Bureau, the Heinous Crimes Unit, or some organization t deeply tied to one of the two. A third-party organization in the 24th Ward had been using him as a source of information. His kidnapping may have been an attempt at stopping that. I decided to use the Medu system to search for the the net for information. My, our, weak point was that we couldn't really do much outside of using the net. I tried leaking information concerning the Okai Syndicate to employees of the Regional Adjustment Bureau named Suki and Osato, and monitored the reaction. I also contacted Kuro Yanagi from the Heinous Crimes Unit via sex chat. But the hint I got regarding Tokyo Morishima's whereabouts came from an unexpected place. The chat system at Quarter temporarily went down due to an extraordinary server load. The computer network covering the entirety of the 25th Ward and the machine at its core had a biocomputer installed, and Quarter was supposed to have been protected by that system as well. Although it was only for a few short minutes, the fact that the Quarter system went down meant that it was handling an unexpectedly immense load of traffic. I knew that Tokyo Morishima must have been connected. A plug was stuck to Tokyo Morishima's silver eye and hooked up to the net. The purpose was to completely delete the existence of Tokyo Morishima. Naturally, the barrier created on the opposing side was tough. I was unable to directly connect with the Tokyo Morishima inside the net. Tokyo Morishira, Morishima was being forced to participate in a fixed game. He was fighting a, da a battle that he would be that he would in no way be able to win. I don't know if his opponent being named Slash was supposed to be humorous, or if it was simple irony. Or maybe the anxiety in Tokyo Morishima's heart had given birth to some sort of weird monster. Either way, it was my duty to get a weapon to Tokyo Morishima, who was on the verge of death. I was finally able to check out backstage, aka the backyard. That was the red room. And it was there that where I used a somewhat dirty hand to send a program. Naturally, at first I was prepared to use any means necessary, but if Tokyo Morishima didn't himself didn't notice what I had sent, then it would have been wouldn't have been possible to cancel the uninstallation program. 
Oh, like a fisherman casting his weighted line into the sea, I sat and waited patiently, watching the surface of the water for signs of movement. I'll get an offer guarantee on your life and the life of your little sister. That's the first condition. What else? Money? I'll be needing that too. Okay then. One billion. Sounds good. The monitoring data from the 25th Ward experiments. Is that how much the data is worth to you? Yes. Scientific value. Value as a political playing card. Value as a weapon. It's basically equal value to the power to totally rule the world of finance and politics for the next ten years. You're pretty straightforward, huh? Is this all off the record? For the war? The 25th Ward is about to disappear. Apparently, it's about to sink completely and perfectly into Davy Jones' locker. That will mark the end of the experiment. Do you understand the utter importance of the data you sent off somewhere? Kinda, yeah. Where's my sister? In the 24th Ward. She's not being held captive or anything like that. However, I can flip the switch at any time. What, do you have some sort of bomb set up or something? It means I'm fully prepared to erase her to erase her existence at any moment. I've never spoken to her face to face before. If you'd like to, then go meet her. I won't do that. I think I might go off on a little trip somewhere. Some southern island, maybe. You probably don't care, but I'll recognize, recommend a nice little island for you. I feel like you're gonna set up a bomb or something, and that's no fun. When Tokyo Morishima came back to this world, he was still connected to the net. His lower half was still submerged in the water. It would be no exaggeration to say that this was a once-in-a-lifetime chance. There was no way I could let that chance pass me by. If I could use the net to take on the memories that were gradually coming back to Tokyo Morishima, then I would have more options and be able to buy some time. I could outsmart the process set up by the organization that had enhanced Tokyo Morishima. Tokyo Morishima and I synchronized. I do want Tokyo Morishima to live, but I wonder. Looking inside Tokyo Morishima's head, I found that there were a great many ghosts living there. I think about why it was that Tokyo Morishima had such power bestowed upon him. Kamui, appearing from among the cracks and recesses in the darkness, kills people. But that may just be an impulse that is neither good nor bad by nature. But the souls of those killed cannot rest in peace. Maybe the souls, turned into sacrifices of our time, are unable to find a place of peace and rest, and only continue to wander aim aimlessly. Therefore, the negative come, we had to take all of those in. Maybe this is the essence of Tokyo Morishima's existence. If so, then it would be his fate to be forced to continue to live eternally. But this is too heavy a fate for a single human to have to take on by themselves. If he does not have the means to bring these ghosts to some place they can rest, then he is certain to reach his limit eventually. That is when I realized that it was what Tokyo Morishima wanted. No copies of the data. I want to buy the on only the absolute one-of-a-kind original. 
In that case, we're gonna need to trust each other. That's why I'm saying I'll throw in something worth it. Originally, it was our own fault in not being properly prepared. We recognize and accept that. See, you're admitting that you fucked up. Failing to get rid of Slash was careless. It's a bit late for that. Indeed. So anyway, I'm gonna pass. Hmm? Pass on what? The steel of ours. I'll give you three billion. That's more than fair, right? You just don't get it. Get what? You're just going to abandon this? For what? Desperation? Is that what good is to you? What sort of merit is there in that? It's not about good nor jack shit. Merit? What are you even talking about? You're not getting the fucking data. I'm gonna spread it over the net. I've made my decision. This is gonna be the end. For both you and your sister. It is what it is. A play is a world with its own inhabitants and its own laws and its values. Saurion, hmm? But this is no play or... Who's gonna kill me? You gonna do it? I won't lay a finger on you. That's someone else's job. Someone more skilled? Yes. Let's give this point a small talk. This is goodbye then, Mr. Kipple. Well, shit. It's gonna get even hotter today. On the other side of the spectrum, I was about to reach my own limit. I don't know what the sickness of mine is exactly, but at some point my body had de deteriorated to the brink of death. As long as I'm connected to the meadow system, it doesn't really bother me. But when I return to my original body, even a single cough is excru excruciating. I had tried all sorts of medication, but medicine was no longer able to stave off my own destruction. GLT spoke to me about the stars. He told me that it was discovered that a white dwarf 50 light years from Earth contained a core made from extremely hard crystals. The main element... Element? Pfft. The main element of which this white dwarf is composed of is carbon. Which, is, which had crystallized under the immense pressure. That makes that white dwarf a huge diamond, 4,000 meters in diameter. The white dwarf is a fixed star in its own terminal stage. Our own sun will also burn out and become a white dwarf about 5 billion years from now. And then another 2 billion years, its core will form an amazing, amazingly huge diamond. I can't keep living for that long. I said this to GLG as he lay next to me in bed. Neither can I. But when you think about the fact that that day will come eventually, doesn't, get, doesn't it get you excited? And give you a sort of peace of mind making it easier to sleep? This may be true. In the far, far distant future, everything may become hard and crystallized one day. The story sounded more beautiful and amazing to me than any fairy tale I've ever heard. How long is this chapter? I could have just ended it a while ago, though. But I've got real into it. Fucking liar. She died several hours ago. She was killed. However far away from her I may take myself, I know this for certain. The fact that I know this is my own tragedy. So this is the end of the 25th Ward. Guess I'm gonna be sinking down into the same sea too. 
I'm glad I was able to set Red free. While waiting for the 25th ward to disappear, I fell asleep. Although I'm only supposed to have a little bit of time left to live, I still managed to fall asleep. It's kind of funny. Human beings really are silly beings. Anyway, I had a short dream to send. Slash appeared in my dream, and he gave me a rundown of the whole story. He said the data was all forwarded and trusted to Red. Red heard this and nodded his head. Please leave it to me. Hearing Red's voice for the first time, I found out that Red was actually an old lady in her 60s. So, Red was basically sort of like my mom. Then a whole bunch of emotions swell up inside me, and I start crying. I wonder why I always wake up right, at, right away whenever I cry in a dream. I wake up to find myself on a boat. I looked out over the sea and looked up to the skies. I could still see the 25th ward out in the distance. I felt the sea breeze. I wiped my tears and called out some names. Slash. Medu. Red. It's sad that none of these are their real names. Red alone was at least a name I had decided on myself. I am a... Kamui. Kamui is a fearsomely wild god. That's how he felt to me. Ashes to ashes. Dust to dust. Water to water. Everything goes as it flows. That is the true purification. Is I? I think he ripped out his eye. And possibly shot himself. Well, rest in peace, Tokyo. Okay, there's. I think this is the last chapter in Placebo, but I don't know if I should do that or get started on Matchmaker. Save them for at, for when I'm done with correctness. Well, I'll I'll have figured it out by the next episode. Till then, this is the Gamer Girl signing off. Bye bye.